all human movement occurs around levers. So this is about all human movement. And you might be thinking, hang on a second, does that mean that everything that we do is kind of a circle or a part circle? Good question, you lot, because that is absolutely the case. So let me introduce you to that notion. Here we are, God, I wish it looked like that. We've got a, a person here who's doing some kind of bicep curl. Let's imagine that this dumbbell is kind of, oops, that's the wrong layer altogether. Let me, let me do that. This, this dumbbell here is kind of on its way up somehow. It's doing this. Now, if you notice what's happening with this arm at the elbow, the elbow obviously could be here, but it's effectively pivoting around in this direction, right? It is making a circle or a part circle. That's because we have got this kind of angular action taking part because of a lever. Now, I'm going to get rid of all of those lines there. And what I'm going to introduce you to, you guys here, uh, to the component, you folks here, is to the components of levers. So here, the, here we are, first of all, we have a lever component. And this thing here is called a lever arm. Now, in the case of the elbow, what we've got here, we could describe this lever arm as the forearm. Let's say it's the radius, for argument's sake, in the forearm. Now, in order for a lever to be a lever, we need more than that. We need this yellowy thing. Now, this yellowy thing here is what we describe as a fulcrum or a pivot. And in this case, it's the elbow joint. And of course, the elbow joint is effectively capable of doing this and this, right? We're going to call it flexion extension. But this is effectively circling or part circling. So we've got our fulcrum, we've got our joint. Now, the next thing we need for this to be a lever is we need a load. And of course, our load our load or our resistance, we could say, is the weight of the dumbbell. You could also say the weight of the forearm as well. And then finally, folks, we need this red arrow thing. And this is what we call an effort. Okay, an effort. Those are Fs in there. I'm not very good at curling the tops of my Fs. Those are, it's an effort. And in this case, the effort is coming from this muscle here, which of course we know as the bicep, which is inserting down over here and it's pulling up in this direction. Okay, it's actually inserting down onto the radius and pulling up in that direction. And we know that's a contraction of the bicep. Okay, so nice and simple from that perspective. So we have got one, two, three, four components of a lever. We've got four components. We have got a lever bar or a lever arm. We have got a fulcrum or a pivot. We have got a load or resistance and we've got an effort. That's what we need for a lever to be a lever. Now you might be thinking, okay, all well and good, James. How do we actually put this into some context? Well, what I'm gonna try and do with you here is I'm gonna try and teach you all about classifications of levers and what those classifications do. So we're gonna look at lever classifications. And sort of the nice news here is there are three types. There is a class one lever, there is a class two lever, and there is class three lever. And we're gonna look at what these things are, how they work, and how we can recognize them, okay? We're also gonna look at what they do. So with that in mind, let me draw you down to a different performer. Here, we have a performer who is performing, I think, what is a seated volleyball um, set. And in essence here, the person has drawn their head back and they are extending at the neck. So this is what we would call neck extension. Now, we don't really study neck extension as a movement pattern. But let's just assume that here. So what have we actually got here? Notice, we have got a lever arm, okay, or a lever bar. It's just here. We have got a fulcrum. Now, in this case, the fulcrum is the neck joint itself. We have a fulcrum. We have a load. In this case, the load is the weight of the head, sort of acting down through the center of gravity. And we have an effort. And in this case, the effort is the neck muscles pulling downwards. But notice for me which of those components is in the, is in the middle. The fulcrum is in the middle. Fulcrum in the middle. Now, if I was to tell you that the fulcrum in the middle, this means that this is a first class lever system. Lever system. And you might be saying, well, why is that the case? Well, we have a little rhyme to help us with this. And the rhyme goes like this. For one, two, three, think, I'm not going to get the same colours here, oh that was good, think F, F, think L, think E. Now what this means is that if you look at this association here, if the F is in the middle, which it is here, look, it's in the middle of the lever arm, the fulcrum is in the middle, this is a first class lever. And I just want to clarify for you, this means that the this means that the fulcrum is between the L and the E. So we've got the fulcrum in the middle. That's just really the same point, isn't it? We've got it at the neck. We know that the load 
is the head or the weight of the head, you know, which is a heavy object. I mean, you've got to hold it up with those neck muscles all the time. It gets a bit tiring after a long day at school, right? Effort is the neck muscle. So effort is the neck muscles. I mean, we could name these, but they're not really relevant at this point. You've got silly names as well. Sternocleidomastoid, Scalenes, they're very long names. Effort is the neck muscles. And we've also got in here um, that this would be relevant in something like we've got obviously looking up in a set shot. But what about something like a header in football? What about that? A header in football. Imagine drawing the head back ready to sort of plant the forehead onto the football. A header in football is a nice extent, uh, example of neck extension and where that might apply to movement. Let's go further down. Let's look at this movement now. Now let's loosely call this a running or a jumping action. Running or a jumping action. I would typically call this plantar flexion at the ankle. Now, we don't really cover plantar flexion at the ankle, which is a little bit annoying. So we'll just say at the ankle. Okay, now I want to cover what's happening here. So let's see if we can address it. Here is our lead. Let me do a darker color. Here is our lever arm. Lovely. We've got the fulcrum is actually the contact point between the floor and the foot. We've got the load, which is the weight of the human body acting downwards through the tibia. And we've got the effort, which is the gastrocnemius here, pulling in that direction and applying force to the heel. So what have we got in the middle for one? Let's just go back up. For one, two, three, think FLE, we have our load in the middle. This has to be a second class lever. So let's just go through this a little bit. We have got the load, wrong color, in the middle. And we could say the load's obviously between the fulcrum and the effort, right? But the load is in the middle. We can also say the fulcrum is the point between floor and foot. Okay, so that's actually the fulcrum, floor and foot. We can also say that the load is body weight. And as I said before, it's acting down, downwards through the tibia. That's where the center of mass actually acts downwards in this case. That's a really nice way to look at it. So we've got this second class lever. Let me put that over here. We've got this second class lever system. And what we're saying here is that it's second class because the load is in the middle. Now, the only example of a second class lever is in this kind of ankle action. Okay, so there are no others in the human body. This is the only one. And I'll come back to that point in a few moments time. But let's move it forward and finish off our classification. We come back to our original bicep curl. I'd just like to remind you, we are talking about the upwards action. Now, your exam board just tell us that there's a third class lever at the elbow. Okay, so this is a third class. I'm telling you that already. And it's at the elbow. I would just mention to you that other movements at the elbow wouldn't be third class. But I'll allow your teacher to discuss that with you if they choose to. Because I don't want to sort of confuse you at this point. But things like elbow extension actually aren't a third class. Anyway, whole other story for whole other day. Now, let's go through. Lever arm is in place. It would be the radius in this case. The fulcrum is the elbow. The load is the weight of the dumbbell. The effort, as we've said, is the bicep. Now we have got the effort is the middle component. So for one, two, three, let's go all the way back up here. For one, two, three, think FLE. E is in the middle. So therefore, this has to be a third class lever system. So E in the middle, or at least in between, let's put it that way. E in the middle, lovely. We have got the load is, let's say the dumbbell. I always struggle with the spelling of dumbbell, but I believe it's like that. We have got the F is the elbow. And of course, what we've got, we have got the E, which is the bit in the middle, is the bicep, or specifically the insertion of the bicep muscle. Okay, and that makes that a third class lever. Now, before we finish and leave this topic behind us, I want to just introduce you, though we're going to do a whole other session on it, I want to introduce you to the notion of mechanical advantage because, of course, the fact that levers are structured differently give them different specialisms, different roles within the body. So let's have a look at this. We've got mechanical advantage. Now, this is really what I, where I want you to get uh, with this. I want you to take the notion of an effort arm. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a second, James, that's a foot down there, not an arm. This is what an effort arm is. An effort arm is the perpendicular distance between a fulcrum and the effort. Okay, so can you see that distance there is a perpendicular distance between the effort and the fulcrum? That is what we would call an effort arm. Now, the other thing to be aware of is that the distance, let me choose a different color, the distance between the fulcrum and the load 
is called the load arm or sometimes called the resistance arm and this is really important folks if our effort arm is large or long and if our load arm is relatively speaking smaller that produces a condition called mechanical advantage and you're very welcome to go and test this out there's loads of ways to actually do that but what it means is if we've got mechanical advantage because our effort arm is long and our load arm is to some degree shorter it means that we can lift large loads with little effort in other words they are efficient in force production with little effort now if you consider that we've got mechanical advantage at the ankle where the human body is weight bearing all of a sudden this large load with little effort all doesn't make sense but let me just look at this other example and we'll, then we'll leave it for a future tutorial but if you now look here look here's my effort arm from here to here nice and short but my load arm from here to here is really long okay so what of course we've got a different relationship we do not have mechanical advantage at this point so this is not a particularly large low load little effort type um, type uh, lever instead what it's good at is kind of speed and range of movement and we'll touch on these concepts in more detail in the coming tutorial thank you